my expectations of a PowerPoint are a little bit different than a regular teacher. Okay, a regular teacher is going to assign a PowerPoint and they're super interested in the subject. I am not interested in the subject of the PowerPoint. You can choose to do anything you want. I am specifically interested in the PowerPoint itself. I need to be able to see you, everybody in here, create a business level teaching or training PowerPoint. So it's not an entertainment PowerPoint. It's not for kindergartners or for fun and games. It's a business level teaching or training PowerPoint. And because I'm looking at the PowerPoint itself, the subject doesn't really matter. You can choose to do anything you want. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't really matter what you pick. It's got a business application. This is a business class. I'm looking for 15 slides total. Title slide, 13 content slides, and a reference slide. That equals 15. Yes, reference slide. Now in the instructions here, it says for the references, I'm looking for the web address and the date you retrieve the information. Okay, a PowerPoint is multimedia, right? Multi-meaning more than one. So if you were to go and try to not have to do a reference page because you didn't borrow any pictures, all of a sudden it's not multimedia anymore. It's monomedia because then you've only got text left, right? That's not what I'm looking for. A presentation like this should give people visuals. It should have pictures up there that capture their interest. It should you know, include all of that kind of stuff. That's why it's a multimedia presentation and not just a word processor. For anything you borrow, you have got to give credit to the owner. That's the only way educational fair use works. If you've ever looked at copyright law, educational fair use are the set of guidelines that allow us in education to borrow pretty much anything we want, as long as we give credit to the owner. If you don't give credit to the owner, you are in fact breaking the law. Okay, this number five is where I've kind of tried to explain what it is I'm actually looking for, what you're gonna get points for. I am looking for a business level teaching or training PowerPoint. Because you can do any subject you want, it's almost impossible for me to say, you have to have two paragraphs of information and four pictures, or you have to have three bullet points and two pictures, or whatever. You need to figure out what your PowerPoint needs to be for your subject. And that's gonna be very, very different between students, right? You, if you were to look at a slide in a slideshow, and you were to think to yourself, does that look like it would be at home in a business meeting, you know, like people's suits and ties and whatnot, right? Or does that look like it would be at home in the kindergarten classroom? Because kindergartners can't even read. So if your slide looks like it's gonna be at home in kindergarten, don't expect very many points. If your slide looks like it would be perfectly at home in a business meeting, that's what I'm looking for. It's like a whole spectrum. If you're veering towards business meeting, you're probably all right. If you're veering towards kindergarten, not so much. One of the best examples of this, I always have guys in here that wanna do PowerPoints on cars. Classic cars, fast cars, expensive cars, doesn't matter, right? So I have a student trying to do that. So he goes online and he spends like 10 minutes finding the most awesome picture of a late 60s Corvette. Super iconic car, right? They use it in movies all the time. I know you know what I'm talking about if you saw one. Finds an awesome picture, slaps it on the slide, makes it full size so it looks nice, loud and proud. And then at the top of the slide, he writes Corvette. And that's the whole slide. That is worth absolutely zero. I'm not looking for picture books. I'm looking for a business level teaching or training PowerPoint. Now, this six, seven, and eight, hyperlinks, animations, and sounds. We will talk about that and I'll do demos on it 
in the second video. So let's get this rolling. So to start up your PowerPoint, you're gonna be in your Google Docs like this, and I'm gonna go up and click the new button, and I'm gonna click a new Google slide, create. When you create a new Google slide show, you're gonna be presented with a screen that looks like this. Now, over here on the side, we have themes. You are more than welcome to choose a theme if you want, but you have to keep in mind that a theme is gonna take over quite a bit. Okay, see like this theme right here changes the size and the fonts and the colors of my text, it changes stuff that's in the background, you know, designs on it. If that's what you want, go for it. Tons of business people use themes. It's a pretty quick, easy way to get a decent looking presentation that looks the same throughout that, you know, aligns everything pretty good. However, I find that quite often students want a little more creative freedom than that. So if you want to be able to create anything you want, put stuff where you want, use your own fonts, your own everything, just start with a blank presentation. Now, a couple of things we want to talk about as far as manipulating Google Slides to get a decent presentation down. I have a whole other video for some more advanced stuff, but here's just some basic stuff. If I was going to start up a presentation right here, I would start with, even if I didn't really know what the title was, I would start by giving it a title. So let's just say I want to do a PowerPoint on dogs. All right, and then I would add my subtitle of my byline, sometimes they call it. So I could put my name down there. All right, now the second thing I would do is I would actually go and insert a new slide. Before I even go any further, I would insert a new slide. So here's my new slide. This second slide, I'm going to immediately call my references slide. Now here's why I do that. All right, let's say on my dog slide right here, my title slide, I want to put a picture in the background. Now, I see a lot of people throw a picture down on the slide and stretch it out so it looks like it's in the background. But I'm gonna show you how to put a slide in the background for real. Okay, there's a couple of ways to get to this. I can go up to the background button right here, or I can right click, then I can go to change background, takes you to the same place. Uh, let's try the background button up here. So it brings you to here. Now here's the thing about background in Google Slide. It, it's literally going to bring you to this screen where you can either upload something. So if you upload it, that would be like if you had it on your cell phone or somewhere like that and you had or on your hard drive, that would be the upload. The camera would be, I don't want to click on it because I'm using the camera right now to record this, but the camera would literally be if your device you were doing your slide on had a camera, okay? You could do a URL, like if you already knew exactly where the picture was, and you had the exact URL, you could do that. This is from my photos, okay, in my account. I don't have any in there, so that's fine. This is my Google Drive, so there might be some photos in my Google Drive. Okay, but a lot of people are just probably going to go to a Google image search. If I search for an image, let's say I'm going to search for dog, okay, because I'm doing dogs. Now I'm going to try to pick, because I'm messing with the background, you'll notice that my slide is a landscape orientation. So I don't want to pick, like this picture right here, that's portrait, that won't fit well. Okay, but this picture right here would fit just fine. So then I can go ahead and insert that and then say done. There's my dog. Okay, now that's in the background. I can't click on it or anything. In fact, if I click on stuff, it's expecting that I wanna edit these uh, titles in the byline, which now I can manipulate and put those wherever I want. I can make them bolder, I can make them bigger, smaller, whatever I wanna do, because I didn't use a theme. If you're pulling your backgrounds in that way, the only images that Google's going to offer to you are images that don't really need to be referenced. If you are grabbing images from your own cell phone, you don't need to reference those either. But if you are grabbing images from specific sites or you've borrowed stuff from online specific stuff that wouldn't show up in your actual 
Google image search right here because these are all free images. So let's go try that. If I go to a new tab and let's say I go to Google images, I search for dog images. So let's say I pick this one. All right. Now this one, you'll notice this, this didn't show up in my Google image search here because the only images that show up in the Google image search here are basically freebies. Free images that people are allowing you to use for stuff like this. This one doesn't show up there, but let's say I want to use this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one now, I'm going to go to this image, but I'm going to have it open the image in a new tab. Right, so here's this tab, it's just the image. This is the URL for that image. See, it's at posthealthline.com. So this is what I want. I'm gonna copy this with Control C. I'm gonna, if I wanna put this in my slideshow now, I'm gonna to go to by URL, and I'm gonna paste the URL in there. Then I'm gonna insert that image and say done. So there's my different image, but since that was not in the freebies list and I didn't own it myself, that's why I made a reference slide here. I gotta go over here and post that image URL in the reference slide to give credit to the owner. Notice that this does not say Google Images or anything like that. Nowhere on your reference slide should I see Google Images. I know that's where you go to find them, but Google doesn't own any of them. And the point of a reference is to give credit to the owner. So depending on how you borrow your image, depending on how you find your image, you may need a reference slide, you may not. If you do not need a reference slide, then just put in an extra content slide. Make sure you still have your 15 slides. But if you went and borrowed your pictures from places that weren't freebies, that you just wanted to borrow cool pictures offline, which a lot of people will, okay, that's how you do it. You open it in a new tab so that you can get, or a new window so that you can get the actual URL of that actual picture, and then you copy it and bring it into the Google slide through the URL. Okay, also, maybe you don't want your reference slide second, but so if you didn't have a reference slide here, where would you put that URL when you went to borrow the pictures for your slides? Okay, that's why I made that reference slide second, but notice, if I have other, other slides in my presentation, so I got a whole bunch of slides down there. I don't have to leave this as number two. It doesn't have to be number two. In fact, the reference slide should always go at the end of your presentation. So you can just actually grab that and move it. This is what they call the slide sorter pane over here. And you can put this anywhere you want. You can rearrange these any way you want. Okay, so the fact that we made this second just gave us a place to put those URLs, but it should not stay your second slide. Hopefully there's not too many questions about that. Google Slides makes this pretty easy for all of us. You just got to do what you got to do. Send me questions if you've got questions.